This is the story of a man named Stanley. Jim. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in. Is there a hole? All of his Wait, co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. No. Stanley picked up the bucket. Hell yeah. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. <laughs> this was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. <laughs> and here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket... No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Wait, no, I want to go back. Stanley the bucket was right. The door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. <laughs> go somewhere else. The cargo <laughs> lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Well, listen to the bucket. I could jump down. I'm, I'm going to listen to the bucket. In I here, see said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone, and it will take us back home, where we can go about life together. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. <laughs> Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. <laughs> and then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. <laughs> The Stanley Parable Reassurance I didn't even read it. was really meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Well, I'll try anyway. Stanley! Can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. You see, 
He's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. <laughs> you know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket. This stupid hunk of metal. Press E to ignore anyone in your life except for me. It's sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket. This cold, empty bucket. This sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. You believe I'm real, don't you, Stanley? Yeah, of course. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier. More capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. saying better at carrying water from room to room it's a bucket it's literally just a bucket why do i feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket <laughs> oh no i'm i'm having feelings for the bucket no 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 no, no 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 what's going on why do i want to be with the bucket hear what the bucket has to say do anything it asks what's what? wrong with me i don't understand perhaps perhaps if i had the bucket this would be less confusing yes the bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation stanley give me the bucket give it to me give me the <laughs> bucket stanley i need it give it to me now give it or i'll What the f <laughs> just happened? <laughs> Stanley had never seen the office this brightly lit. Was it a sign of something? He hoped it was. He hoped very much that it was. Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. I want to go in the meeting room and wait there. Felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. Truly, being here with the bucket was a grand adventure. Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. First, walking through the door on the right, then walking to the lounge, then arriving at the lounge. What a thrilling journey the bucket had inspired. I need to order food. Perhaps this was where the bucket felt most truly at home, here in the employee lounge. Perhaps it's the only place a bucket can even feel at home. Okay. All right, I'm over it. But finally, the bucket was done being in the lounge, and they took the first open door on their left to get... And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. I want to go to the broom closet. Is that over there? I don't know. I feel like I might have missed it by going right initially. I think it might be over here. I want to check. No. Oh, it's past the meeting. I see. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now yes. more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet, it wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy, it's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. <laughs> I can really feel it now. 
It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your <laughs> companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name-calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk <laughs> that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons. But even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? <gasps> that your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never. <laughs> Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. Okay, I've got you something <laughs> which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. <laughs> there. Now it's settled. No more oh, debate. Shit. No more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. All right, I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see? I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Ah, oh, it's a bucket. There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. <laughs> what the f***? <laughs> you know what? I could take the name-calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. All right, I think that's it. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the Bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. <gasps> you found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, Let's go. no reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So... I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Hell yeah. I can't believe I did it. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? Oh, his boss would think he was crazy. And then... Something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. That's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized this isn't my bucket. 
It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would come from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, gracious, he exclaimed. Without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley, Stanley, it's me, the bucket. What could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were his special bucket. Come to me, Stanley. Find me. <laughs> he had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, he froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. What? She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. Of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion <laughs> and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Mariella thought, and she hugged her own bucket even tighter. But of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself, my life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Do I want to take the bucket again? The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Okay, I think I, I want to jump down now the way to the from the moving room, like uh, Stanley platform. Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. A cargo lift, yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley if I did jump not off here, do I just die? How this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him. But Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket, his dearest friend. God damn it. So he threw himself to his death that they might die in one another's arms. How okay, I have to land on the walk or the catwalk or whatever. All right, got to do it again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps warmth spread through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chin. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. Looks like I can go in or whatever. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. 
Stupid Stan bucket. the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. A cargo lift. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Oh, Stanley shit. did not question Look. why or how this bucket was speaking <gasps> to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket uh -oh. had spoken to him, oh, and he okay. unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Um... Yeah, so there's like a vent right there. I'm not sure how I get to it. Maybe I can walk on those boxes directly ahead of me and then I can fall down. And then after collecting the collectible, I go through the vent. I don't know. Something like that, probably. Maybe the door? Yeah, I don't know. But I think I... Oh, there's a... <laughs> there's literally a ramp to walk on the bot. Yeah, okay. Next time. No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. What? Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. Now, uh, then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios, and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simple <sighs> enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. Item one. Is this a bucket? Correct. It is a hologram of a bucket, not an actual bucket. What? I knew. <laughs> Item Obviously. two. Is this a bucket? Incorrect. What? It is a 3D printed recreation of a bucket, not an actual bucket. What? Item three. Is this a bucket? Correct. This is a bucket. Okay, I got two out of three. That's pretty good. Item four. Is this a bucket? What? Are you hallucinating? This is a tractor. It's an enormous machine that tills the earth. I thought this was a gimmick. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? Absolutely incredible. Let's just move on to the next one. <laughs> is this a bucket? Correct. This is a bucket. What? It <laughs> Item six. Is this a bucket? Trick question. Both. Gotcha. <laughs> Item... Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. Okay. You and I both know there isn't anything here. And I don't appreciate the implication that nothing is a bucket when we both clearly know that a bucket is something. And therefore nothing could possibly be something. Unless, in your twisted mind, have you somehow convinced yourself that a bucket is nothing? Answer me straight, Stanley. Do you believe that nothing is a bucket? You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. 
What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. But I'm going to erase all buckets from the game <gasps> entirely. No. Okay. Here we go. What happened? Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait, was everything a bucket? Every single thing in the game was a bucket. Oh my God, I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue. But it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what. I'll reset everything and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. My stickers. I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. Okay. Oh, won't we all just laugh and laugh at the time I thought everyone had gone missing? Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again. Not truly alone. Not with the bucket around. Do it without the bucket? Oh, well, I want to get the achievement. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly. I guess I'll get the chair. achievement this and then kill myself. This way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was it no? Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Another miniature Stanley yes. figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Or what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. Excellent. I want to see where this goes. What the f Okay. This is day number 295. Take number. <laughs> I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. The sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. <laughs> and the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. Oh, it doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Why everything feels so... What do I do with this treasure? I can... I can monetize it. Yes. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful. 
Because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get... What's that? Who's there? Okay, what? <laughs> Interesting. Huh, <gasps> my smoothie and my uh, little burrito are almost here. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What if I don't go with the bucket? Like, is the bucket where you activate the DLC? That's kind of how I view it. I'm gonna try without it and see what happens. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Trust the completionist instinct. There will be a reward for finding them all. There will be. <laughs> Somewhere both red and blue. Oh, sh**. Near a fireplace? A private but smelly place for an important person. Somewhere both red and blue. The bathroom. True. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Aha! Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one. Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Of course. What the f***? Never seen this before. Do I go up? Okay, I'm gonna go down? No, up, 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 up. Here's the door, just go. <gasps> You're getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, you'll collect the last one. And then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. We'll be different people by then. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. <laughs> Figure. <laughs> the name. <laughs> F Figure and... <laughs> I can't even say it. <sighs> Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Nope. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. 
At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. <gasps> the hole! Oh, never mind. Oh, the hole! Never mind. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? What? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead <gasps> from the moment he hit start? What? No. Interesting. Button sounds. Zone. Tron. I should have taken the bucket. The bucket would tell me what the f to do right now. I'm just gonna walk the hell out of here. Exit. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. Oh. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... Well, that was sick. Okay, I gotta go grab my smoothie. One second. It was crazy. I actually bought a wig um, for when I get unbanned. I bought like a homeless wig and like a wife beater and all that. And I was gonna be like, oh, guys, I'm so old. I didn't want to do it though. I got lazy. I have the wig right here. I, don't, I, I didn't even take it out of the bag. I've got like eight months worth of packages. 
by my door and outside of my door. I just haven't opened anything. They're called wife beaters, right? I think they are. I don't know. Let me see if I can get this off. Hang on. Oh, it's a beard too. Look at this. The whole shebang. One sec. Forgot about this. Until I just stepped on it. See, I got the beard. And then... Dang it, I can't get it on. Oh, f Santa, you're not real. And shit. Dang it. <laughs> That's so it's annoying. It was starting to get itchy. <laughs> I need to eat food. Anyway, I'm going to play one handed. Already, this was uncomfortable. And Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. The good old bucket. Just Stanley and the bucket. Off on another thrilling adventure together. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly mm. to his chest and entered the door on his left. Mm. Go oh, ahead. I don't know what I want to do. I guess this one's fine. Somewhere both red and blue. I don't know where that would be. Maybe I should go to the mind control room with the bucket. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Also, I kind of want to try the elevator again. Maybe I just did it wrong. Maybe I'm going to the top of the infinity hole.
Okay, this is ridiculous, right? Oh, I had to hit buttons. What? I'm over it. But at least I'm done eating. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. True. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would, and he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Wow. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be bam, all Stanley could bam, do to keep himself bam. together if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. I'm reading live stream fails comments. I should stop, sorry. My bad. I'm gonna sneeze. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. <laughs> Go up here. Bye bye. <sighs> Ow. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped. Wait, what if I go down to the bottom with the bucket? Picks. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. But I'm worried that it's like it's gonna be super uh, boring if I go down. Like it's gonna be a massive waste of time. <gasps> Not doing it. <sighs> You can always restart. Yeah, but then I gotta go all the way through again. It's like, you know. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? Oh what God. kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. 
His own life in someone else's control? Never! Mm. He squeezed the bucket There's tighter. a pirate! His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. Okay. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? What? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly, silly birds. What? The control buttons became active again. <laughs> Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his wow. hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place flipping through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. <laughs> of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. And Stanley was happy. Oh, that, <laughs> that's it. Oh my God, okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? They're just so heck and silly. decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Where are we going today, the bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine with him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Is there anywhere to go on the right? Red and blue, okay, maybe. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better? No, never mind. Oh, I could the go to the no wrong. bucket room without the bucket. Stanley I forgot about doing that. Left to go back to the meeting room. Uh, fuck. I think I've already done this. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Have I done this with the bucket? I think I did, didn't I? And then it does the little tape recorder and that's pretty much it. Begin the game again. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go without the bucket. Fuck, where was the, um... Hello. This is a recorded message scheduled either by you or a person in your place of work. The purpose of this message is to warn you about the dangers of recorded messages. If at any time you believe you are listening to a recorded message, please terminate it immediately and cease all flow of information from the recorded message into your perceptual sphere. Thank you, and have a pleasant day. Okay, so how do I get to the room where buckets aren't allowed? I forget. Is it left or right? 
think it was left. The catwalk. When Stanley came that to was a set the two open doors, okay, he so entered, I go right. this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Okay. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. And here it was, the lounge. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> okay. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you... What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that uh -huh. I'm on your side. And there it is, the last Stiggly Wiggly. Savor this moment, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. This is doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward, and we can't have that. So, instead I'll just say, it's done. We're all done here. And now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. Excellent. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked... All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. <laughs> Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. A one? I mean, I can understand if you had reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved to more fully express itself mechanically and artistically, but a one? That's not even helpful. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh, but I guess it isn't my place to judge. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Uh. <laughs> Leaderboard. What the f***? Where am I? <laughs> Wait, how much time do I have played in this game? 106 minutes? Okay. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. 
you click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Aha! I love this game. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your <laughs> creep tower. Perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Ooh. I thought it booted up Minecraft. <gasps> Last time I remember playing this game, I, I could have sworn it was Minecraft. Oh no. No, 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 it can't be. Oh, is this part of the Ultra Deluxe package? It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly block it off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank goodness, Stanley, what a close call. I really wandered off into that, that thing, that big open just wandering around, no <laughs> right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, 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 oh. thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. <laughs> Pac-Man? <laughs> okay. I think this will be just the thing. <laughs> Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together? Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Can't jump, Are you but... doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I worked so hard on? Wait. Stanley, I have a thought. And I... Hold on. What are you doing? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. <laughs> How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. What do I do? I don't have a bucket. I don't have a light. Oh. Mm -mm. 
Is this the back rooms? Like, oh, sh <gasps> my office. What? What do I do in here? I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. <laughs> and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. <laughs> Hell yeah. Stanley, I'm sorry, but I have to put a pause on things. It's just... What? It's those figurines. Those figlers. I haven't stopped thinking about them since you nabbed every last one. Wasn't it just the most intrinsically fulfilling moment of your entire life? Didn't it fill you to the brim with inner richness? Yes, I know we're supposed to be telling a story, but won't you please indulge me with one more trip back to the memory zone? I would oh, love nothing more than to revisit the figurines. Just one more time. The memory zone. <laughs> okay. Now remembering when Stanley found the collectibles. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Audience award. Ah, here's where it all began. The first collectible. I remember. And then we had no idea of how many of them we'd find. Sure, it said six right there on the screen, but how could we know for certain? We were so innocent. We'll never be like that again, Stanley. Seven out of six? <sighs> What? And here was the second Stan Noreen. I'll be honest, back then I had no faith in you to find any of them, let alone six. But you continue to surprise me in all sorts of mundane, unremarkable ways. Huh. Okay, let's do a little quiz. Which of these rooms was the room you found your third mini Stan? Can you remember? Yeah, it's my boss's bathroom. No, no, no. The boss's bathroom was the fourth place you found a thick Anley, not the third. Well, I guess perhaps I shouldn't be surprised. Fuck. Memories like these are so precious and so cherished that they all just sort of blend together, don't they? You know what? If the boss's bathroom feels like the third place you found a collectible, then who am I to go making judgments? Yeah, you're right. Let's see. What came next? Oh, yes, we found a figly in this pink room. 
Oh, well, I can't actually say I remember being in this room, but it's here in the memory zone, so it must have happened. What? It did? This was the fifth mini stand, and this one was really something special. It was behind the boss's office. I remember it so clearly. In fact, because this one is particularly special to me, I made a little video to commemorate the occasion. Enjoy. <laughs> 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 ah, takes you back, doesn't it? I spent a lot of time making that video, but it was eight minutes I wouldn't have spent on anything else. God damn it. <laughs> Holy fuck. And then, Stanley, then we came to the last collectible, the final right. figurine, right here by the red and blue doors. This memory is the most distinct and clear in my mind, perhaps because it was the one that happened more recently than all the others. Who can truly say how the mind works? All I know is that this is the moment where you picked up a figly and I thought to myself, yes, that's all of them. They're all collected. It was a moment unlike any other, except for the other moments picking up figurines, which it was exactly like. And then, there was no more. Because we've caught up to the present moment. Nothing left to do but move onward into the future. Goodbye, Memory Zone. Uh, no, 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 I'm not done. I'm not ready to move on. Stop the loading screen. Isn't there some what? way we can stay here, keep enjoying these figurines? Let's just go backwards. We'll do the memory zone again from the opposite direction. See how that feels. Okay. Okay, yes. The room with the red and blue doors. I remember this. Me too. I must say, of all the figurines we looked at in our initial tour of the memory zone, this one is the most distinct and clear in my mind. Let's keep going. I want more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and here's where I made that video. Don't you remember the video we watched? <laughs> yes, I love that video. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, I'm lost. Am I stupid? I am. Still don't remember the pink room, Stanley. Still no memory of this one. Good room, though. A solid room. Yeah, I don't know what the hell that is. These really were a treat to hunt down. You know, if there had been any kind of reward for finding all of these, it really would have neutered the intrinsic joy of collecting them. I'm very glad we resisted the temptation. Next one. Where am I going?
This was our second Figley. Don't you remember? Yes, I remember it too. The past is truly a wonderful thing. Why does anyone ever choose to leave it? Keep going. This is it. The very first one we found in the exhibit where I introduced you to the Figlerines. Oh, I want more memories, Stanley. I want to keep going. What else is there? What came before this? I don't I don't know. Oh sh Collectibles. Okay. Holy f dude, I'm so nostalgic Look, right it's now. It's the terrible new content Give me my jumps that back. we were originally sold on. I remember hating it back then. But time does put a rosy filter on everything. In fact, I dare say I'm actually quite fond of it now. Look how much fun the past is. I want more. More memories. I want more jumps, man. I. It said the jump circle. I thought I could... I just... Oh, yes. The two doors. Who could have forgotten that? A classic memory, this one. And before everything else, there was your office. Is there anything else? Was there something that came before your office? There's something I feel I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. Yes, I'm remembering something now. Oh, I remember no. before this whole story got started. Back then, I was... I was different. I used to make big decisions. I was passionate. I was skeptical. I weighed each decision with profound thoughtfulness. And then somewhere along the way, I stopped making decisions. I became lazy and I came up with, well, came up with a character named Stanley to do my thinking for me. He would make the decisions. He would decide which way to go. I would cheer him on as he collected figurines for no reason. Why did I invent Stanley? Was I lonely? Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps I needed to imagine I had companionship. And Stanley really did make for a wonderful companion, even if he was a fiction. But ah, I suppose it's grown old. I, I want to think for myself again. I want to go back to how it used to be. Yes, I can be on my own again. I can do it. I'll be stronger this time. I'll take care of myself. I don't need Stanley anymore. Oh, but he truly was so much fun to play with. You know what? Since we're in the memory zone, how about one more good memory? Let's go back just once and give Stanley one more run of the office and then I'll retire him for good. <laughs> I did enjoy telling his story so very much. Okay, here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Interesting. Already this was uncomfortable, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. A good bucket, a strong bucket, a humble bucket, a committed bucket, a bucket of culture and distinction. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Where do I want to go now? Remind me. The maintenance room elevator. I don't remember where that is. Go down the lift. Right and then left. Okay, this right and then left. Okay, I see a lot of people typing room. that, so I'm going to do but it. Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. 
the bucket was wrong. I mean, either way, I go Stanley left, took right? The door on his left to go back, and so the two of them detoured through the oh. maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. I haven't done this before. Oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. What? You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. <laughs> The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what <laughs> fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the Adventure Line? We could make the Adventure Line go somewhere new! Yes, yes! That's what the fans want! Let's do it! Whee! Look at that <laughs> Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. <laughs> Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> it's, it's as classic now as it was back then. Let's classic. do it to the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. What? Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. No. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the bucket destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you'd see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... Bucket Destroyer, my prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you. All of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. <laughs> God damn it. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, thank you. It was too bright. The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room. And ah, the embrace of an old friend. Now a the blue door, companionship right? Companionship that stands the test of time. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. 
destroy the bucket? Uh, I could, but I kind of want to go to the blue door. Still, no one was here. Standing Reboot in the bucket's the game warmth entirely. and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Wait, is it the no bucket room? Coming to a staircase, Stanley and oh, the bucket walk upstairs to the boss's office. Can we just quit the game to main menu really quick? Reload the game entirely. Accept gift. What is this? The House of the Dead from Drix? Nice. Hell yeah. All right. I like free things. Okay, does this really matter that much? What am I doing? Did it just hit? Looks like it just turned 34 or something. Jeez. I have to wait a full minute. Whew. That was sick. <laughs> it's a pretty accurate clock right there. Before we get started, can I just say something? Wait. They were actually setting the clock both times you've booted up the game. <laughs> a lot of people don't take that step seriously. They just leave the clock set at 12 and call it a day. But you're actually taking the time to set the clock, and I appreciate that. That's how I know that you care about this experience. <laughs> you're paying attention. <laughs> I don't even have any way of knowing if the times you're setting are correct. Tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Since you've been so cooperative, next time you boot up the game and see the screen, just set the clock to your favorite time. Go ahead. Pick whichever time you want. Even if it's not the correct time, you've earned it. Oh. All right, I'll let you get back to the game. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to close it. I'm going to do 420. We'll see. Maybe he's like, maybe the game's like good one. <laughs> I wanted to do... 1337, but I don't really know if it can do military time. Okay, so... Wait, what am I doing? No, yeah, I'm gonna go to PM4. Your favorite time of the day. Could you simply not resist giving me the correct time again? That is not the correct time. Now I'm curious, how accurate is 420p? Let's use another slider to find out. <clears throat> not all the way incorrect I think it's like there you know can I just say regardless of the accuracy of the clock I'm having a great time adjusting these settings I feel like I'm learning more about you and how you like things to be set it's good to collect data I wish we had more sliders but we've gone through all the sliders I have <laughs> hold on Sorry. Perhaps I can invent some new sliders to gather new data. Shouldn't be too hard. Let me whip a couple new ones. 
Should be ready by the next time you boot up the game. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Written by Davey Redden. Please adjust the slider until the computer is barely visible. Okay, I'm going to change it just so it knows I care. <laughs> They're friends. <laughs> Please adjust the slider until the number five becomes the number nine. What? I saw nine. It's got to be the number nine, right? So this one. Yeah, this is a trick question. Or like some people would just go all the way to the right. And then they would go left and they see this. And they would just go with it. Right? But me, being the completionist that I am, I keep scrolling to make sure. And there you have it. The correct answer. What? Which of the two made up words below is most appealing to you? Scrumptish or acuboinkle? <laughs> um, acuboinkle or scrumtush? I think boinkle, like the oink, oink, like it's just kind of fun. Bo boinkle. Occuboinkle, it just sounds cool. I'm an Occuboinkle main. Please don't adjust the slider. <laughs> Whoa. I won't. <laughs> Do you know what time it is right now? Yes. Is the time that it is right now the correct time? I mean, time is a construct that we have as, as a civilization have created. So, depends on what time we're talking about. Are we talking about the time on Earth or the time of the universe? But I'm going to hit yes, even though I know I'm smart. What is time? Fuck, I'm, I'm already ahead of this. <laughs> yes or no? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is there anything about yourself that you haven't told me? Yes. Help? <laughs> no. <laughs> Will you come back to visit me? Yes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? This is the story of a man named Oh, Stan. reboot? All right, let's try. Just in case. This is the real game right here, dude. No, no one truly knows what time it is. Of course they don't. Nobody knows anything. You and I don't even know each other. We're like strangers. Sure, I've adjusted all of the game's settings to your exact specifications, but who hasn't? It's just what I do, like a day job, and now the job is over. 
There's no more info for me to gather. I've collected all the data on you that I can, and I still don't really know you, and you don't know me, and neither of us know what time it is. I guess some settings are just unsettleable. Unsettable, fuck. But if I'm being totally honest, the clock doesn't do anything in the game anyway. You won't even have me here when the game starts next time, but that's okay. Video games were meant to be played alone. You like being alone, don't you? <clears throat> That's maybe the only info I really learned about you. Well, it's time for me to leave. There is still one more setting that we need to adjust, but it may take a little time before I'm ready for that. It's not really in my job description, but that's okay. Perhaps you'll see me again if you, f if you can find me. Talk soon. They added an epilogue. Oh, from the thingamajiggy. What? That's where the skip button is. Actually, no, it's shaped differently. This is the memory. This is memory house. Cookie Nine's blog. Like so many, I enjoyed my time with the original Stanley Parable, which underscores how truly disappointed I am with its sequel. Where the first game teemed with originality, the Stanley Parable 2 is dull, uninspired, and often insulting to its fan base. Rather than expand on what made the first game enjoyable, <clears throat> the sequel veers off into territory nobody asked for. An infinitely deep hole? Who cares? <laughs> Where are the new endings? What about enjoyable bits from the Stanley Parable 1, like the adventure line? Instead, we get an uninspired side quest collecting figurines. Even this diversion feels incomplete. Collecting all the figurines gives you nothing. I must say, though, I found the buck to be quite comforting. A welcome reprieve. <laughs> God damn it.
When Stanley Parable launched a massive success in 2013, its creators made plans to build the property into an entire franchise. But a disastrous critical and commercial reception to the Stanley Parable 2 has prompted the developers to rethink their ambitions. As outlined in a press release they published today, it's clear that more Stanley Parable is just not what the fans want, reads the press release. We thought that we had a vision for the series that players would be excited about, yet it turns out this could not have been farther from the truth. The press release goes on to promise to preserve the artistic integrity of the original game and to stop assaulting fans with our reckless and insulting creative visions. The word sorry appears more than 25 times in the press release. We're sorry. We're sorry. Jim. 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 A lot of gym buttons. Jim. <gasps> oh my god. Holy f Hello again. It's nice to see you. But it's terrible to learn that there will never be another Stanley Parable game. Did you read what the developer said? Preserve the integrity of the franchise? What nonsense. The Stanley Parable is not scared. We do not need to protect it. Screw the legacy. Let's keep making Stanley Parable games until the sun explodes. Let's run this franchise into the ground. Let's drag it through the mud and back. And if people hate it, who cares? You see, that was the narrator's problem. He was so obsessed with what people thought of his work. Don't make his mistake. Don't cling to the legacy. Let it burn. It's not hard. In fact, let me show you. Together, we are going to make the Stanley Parable 3. It's simple. All we do is change the number in the game's title. Title screen. We also really need a really dumb subtitle for the game, something loud and gaudy. Go ahead, try combining some random words together to make a new title for our game. The Stanley Parable 3, Forbidden Jigeridoo. Now with added didgeridoo, didgeridoo, whatever the f Stanley versus didgeridoo. Forbidden didgeridoo, that was my, or just the didgeridoo. I can't do the forbidden didgeridoo. Passion of the didgeridoo. Passion of the. This is good. Passion of the didgeridoo. It's absurd. I love it. Every time you restart the game, we'll advance the number of the sequel by one, and then we'll pick a new subtitle. That way, the Stanley Parable will never end. And nothing in the game itself will change when you do this either. Adding more content sounds like work. No need to do that. It'll just be the same content recycled again and again and again with a new title screen. What do you say? Should we go forward with this plan? I like it, but I want you to have a say as well. Let's do it. Good. Then it's agreed. A new sequel every time you start the game. And you know that, you know what? Since you've put faith in my idea, I feel like giving you something as well. You see, I'm noticing that the narrator never found a way to give you the broken achievement, did he? Of course not. I wouldn't expect him to know how. It's been bothering me. Let's fix it. 
All right, there, the achievement machine is fixed. You see, I'm on your side. We're in this together. We're going to keep this train rolling. The Stanley Parable cannot end. It can only spiral in on itself forever. I must keep the wheel turning. I'm ready. Are you ready? Great. There's only one last thing we need to do. Enter the current time. All right. All right, please adjust the slider till the computer is barely visible. A fistful of ice cream. <laughs> All right, let's play the game. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, Ow, how brain long freeze. to push them, and in what order. Ow. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of <sighs> every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Sally and then one day, was so something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not... I skipped it. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. All right, so where should I go now? Before I touch the bucket, look at the balloons. There ain't nothing on balloons. No bucket, red door. Okay, so yeah, 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 I wanted to do that. I'm gonna do it. Uh, oh, there's also the new content door is open again, but I'm not gonna do that yet. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I go through the catwalk, right? Is it catwalk? 
This was not the correct way to the meeting yeah, room, okay. and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Thanks, Hampu. Wow. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not Achievement sure. machine? Really, really, I'm not. One thing at a time, man. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <sighs> I'm back. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. So what? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let What's the door I went through? I'm on your side. I went through the blue, so I want to go through red chance. now, right? Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I want it to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. Okay. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here. Let me show you. What are we looking for? Hmm? Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> No, wait. Where are you going? Leaving. Oh no. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Please, Stanley, think about what you're doing. Nope. No! Oh, thank God you lived. You have me one. No. No, no. What are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? Nah. Oh my god, is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. <laughs> is it over? <laughs> it's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? All right. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. 
But that it made Stanley want to be a better man and a better co-worker. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? We're going through it again. Is he going to make me do the whole fucking intro again? Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley again? Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 <gasps> I'll get my jumps on back. home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a real... There's no skip button, man. ...imagining of the game for consoles and home computers. They lie. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley We're Parable. Actually, this is Stanley Parable 4. World over. Fistful of ice cream. <laughs> Get it right. Please step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Wait, Stanley. I've just now realized. That bucket you're holding, it's the bucket I've been working on for my sequel. How did you get your hands on it? Isn't this the preview to the sequel? How do you have the bucket already? This... this makes no sense at all. <laughs> Hold on. Did I already show you my ideas for the sequel? I don't remember doing that at all. You're seeing things all out of order. All right, all right, let's see, it's the jump circle. Damn it. I got zero jumps left. The infinite hole, the giant door, did you see them already? Stanley, none of them are ready yet. I'm still developing them. They're not even close to finished. How did they look? When you saw them, were they captivating? Were they exciting? Did they fulfill on the promise of everything that a sequel to Stanley Parable could possibly be? Had I figured out how the hell to make a sequel to this game? Oh. What? Wait, if you're still carrying the bucket around with you, if the bucket is interesting to you, that means I must have made it correctly. Yeah. Yes. You carrying the bucket with you everywhere is exactly what I set out to accomplish. The bucket is the exciting and captivating new content that I promised. I did it. I win. I made a sequel to the Stanley Parable. Yes, the sign is correct. Thank you for enjoying the new content. Thank you for taking the bucket everywhere with you, clinging tightly to the bucket, never letting it go. It means I've won. It means I am victorious over the gamers. It is a <laughs> sweet salve of victory on my soul. Thank you for enjoying the new content. The bucket is the Stanley Parable now. They are one and the same. There is no Stanley Parable without the bucket. I win. 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 That's it? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had said... Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket, but Stanley is a very lucky fellow. Very lucky indeed. Where is the bucket destroyer? I forget. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. I remember and now. Entered the... This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. You can't destroy it? Whatever. Oh, good, Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. 
You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the Adventure Line? We could make the Adventure Line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fan... Whee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes. It's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the bucket destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality. God damn it. But it trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... Alright, it. I'm gonna go to the new content again. I think I've almost drained this game of most every ending. I'm skipping this. I've already seen it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Do I want to go with the bucket? I'm going to go it with the bucket again. It takes a lot of humility to carry a bucket so magnificent. Stanley checked his ego and then proceeded onward. boop a doo doop -a doop You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Oh. Okay, I'm here again. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. 
Well, I figure is this new or if not? If I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Oh, the achievement thing works. I forgot. He's going to be like, wait, how did that work? Now, here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. As you can see, the machine is not working yet since... What? Wait. What in the holy hell is going on? You got the achievement? Yep. Why did the machine work? Stanley, I didn't fix it. I didn't do anything to it. I swear, it was broken just a second ago. Who fixed it? Is someone here? Are we being watched? Oh, God. Composure? Composure. Yes, as you can see, the machine is working as normal as I intended. It, um... It truly speaks to the awe-inspiring magic of the Stanley Parable 2. Breathe. Just breathe. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? <gasps> More collectibles. There should be another one down here, right? Oh. How does this work? Am I supposed to do something here? Press escape, settings. Is that it? I don't care enough. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Wait, there are two buckets here. How did you get a second bucket? Oh no, the warmth and comfort of a single bucket is already so great, so intoxicatingly wonderful. With two buckets, there's no telling. Stanley, can you still hear me? Are you with me? Stanley! <gasps> oh, thank God, I didn't lose you. Stanley, the power of two buckets was too much. I had to destroy both of them. I know how much the bucket meant to you, but I couldn't take the risk. I hope one day... You can forgive me.
All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? Have I? The hole? I feel like the hole is just going to do the whole shebang again. Maybe epilogue? I feel like the epilogue was just a sign saying, hey, we have a new epilogue. That's it. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's much left in this game. So Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together and we'll uh, see whether or not left, it really? coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> Okay, are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, no, <gasps> There's an achievement in there. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, For yes. Our thing. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. So I wanted done all more this. than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course, with respect, with care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could, but it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. Wait, why is it 2 again? No, uh-uh. I should be on five at this point. If it puts me on three, we're going to have a serial problem. Stanley's big. What? Fuck you. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. But at first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? 
isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Well, yes. I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit escape. Okay, I'm going to do it with the bucket. Because I've seen that before. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Stanley cradled the bucket in a gentle embrace. Protective, yet delicate. Assertive, yet... Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? Yes, whispered the bucket into Stanley's ear. We've done it. We've escaped from that dull office and that pesky narrator. At last, out here in the white void, we are alone. Now, and for the first time, I can reveal to you my true self. The bucket began to tell Stanley of its life and its history, of the countless wars it witnessed, desecrating the land and lives of untold numbers of innocent humans, and the bucket's own complicity therein, of sadness and regret, and the many years it spent dwelling on the actions it might have taken to curb the madness and the decay, if only it had been stronger. Of hope and redemption, and its crusade to uplift the stock of life for the common man, to manifest <sighs> justice where none existed, and the bittersweet reality of time, to see one's dreams and wishes met halfway, meted out in parcels like charity, and abandoned as soon as the warm glow of inspiration begins to dim. The opportunities to do so much more, there was so much it could have done, perhaps, the bucket wondered to itself. Okay. Perhaps if it had seen its own darkness with a clearer perception. <laughs> this was way too much for Stanley. What are you talking about? He screamed. You're a bucket! To this, the bucket furrowed its brow. No, said the bucket. Not since the evil wizard Gambhorata first ensnared me in his machinations as payback for the sacred amulet I stole from his treasured vaults. I was young back then and could not conceive the ramifications Gambarata of... again. No! Stanley screamed even louder this time. This is stupid! You are a bucket! This is so stupid! Why are we even doing this? As Stanley screamed and screamed and screamed, the bucket revealed its true form, transforming into a mighty beast of untold power, its fangs glistening like... My God, Stanley, you did it. You saved us from the bucket. Thank God you already had all 12 emblems of sages and knew the incantations to summon their true power. Otherwise, we would have easily been overwhelmed by the bucket's power. I'm speechless. You've demonstrated such bravery here today. Come, let's restart the game, and we'll agree to never again go trifling with this bucket, nor the dark magic cast away inside of it. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Do the vent without the bucket. Can I go into that vent still? Is it still open or no? Wait, the vent? You mean like the vent that's by the catwalk? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Okay. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Right. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Stanley had now gotten himself so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far You didn't think I was actually just a recording, did you? What a silly and trite explanation that would be. All the back and forth between you and me, all the absurd adventures we've been through, and it all turns out I'm just a tape recording? 
It was all just in Stanley's head. I bet that's the kind of twist you think is revelatory. I bet each and every time you watch a movie where it turns out all to be in the main character's imagination, you must absolutely bolt off the couch in pure shock at the phenomenal and intricate storytelling. It must be so simple to be you. Life being an unending waterfall of surprises and delights. How much more exciting you must find the world than the rest of us do. <sighs> now I've become sad. Look what you've done to me. This is all your fault. <laughs> what the... What? <laughs> Hello? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Uh, Alright, let me escape with the bucket. Stanley's bucket. The only co-worker he would ever truly need. So Stanley to escape the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Yeah, I haven't done this yet. Just go through the game normally Still and no just was here. all the way Stanley with the bucket. Needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Fuck, I always go that way. Really? It's not open? Right. Stepping to into his what is it again? office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the wind, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight God ahead damn, through the so large door long. that read, Mind control facility. Chat says go back up. Listen to us. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machine. Okay. Sorry, it just takes forever to get there. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. 
The bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and... What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty, until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket, would go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place. Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Find out what? What? A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started. And if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. <sighs> okay, someone said take the bucket into the hole. Uh. Anything else? Jump the stairs a few times, listen to the narrator, and then leave. Escape pod with a bucket. Unplug the phone with the bucket. <sighs> Try unplugging the Is phone Stanley with the bucket. Without the bucket, really Stanley at all? No, no, surely not. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him I am, that the I think this is my last one. was simply the place to be. And, and then I'm gonna was. open something else. I'm getting kind of bored. To be correct? Was no, never mind. The bucket. Like was the new wrong. endings are cool and all this stuff is cool, Stanley but it's just like right, I don't give a f what he has to, to say, right? Back to the meeting room. No. I'm gonna read an angry Steam review. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. A cargo lift. Yeah. Good. Said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over it's here. It's in here, isn't it? Stanley once Am again I wrong? obeyed blindly. Am I doing this correctly? I, I I don't know. Yes. Okay. And unplug the phone. So the phone I guess is in here. Sorry, my brain is small. Now pick up the phone. <laughs> Whoa! Hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders, Stanley? I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. Ugh. Can't you see? Oh, oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Hmm, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it. But there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there yes, is. There is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. Oh. What is comedic timing? What is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly, 
Can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle Quinn? from your body. <laughs> These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then Spell out your name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half, pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. Let's practice screaming, I'm Denny with the funny now. This is stupid. I'm not saying that. Good. This saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times, just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invaders who threaten our very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles. All of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth Star reign troopers? supreme. Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, let's head back. Oh, my God, okay. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be in stitches. Maybe go the all talking the... bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now? Well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke to the bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. How far back do I have to go, mother... You maybe walk all the way back to the beginning? Oh yeah, the two doors, so it's actually right over here. You're right. You're right. I didn't even think about that. Okay. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Wait, what if I go left? And I actually start listening to him. Go right. I want to see this. Well, oh. uh, we're back at the phone already. 
no, 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 what's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point, a dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land, or well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. What an egregious mistake. I've made a fool of myself. Ow. I don't deserve uh, the title of king of comedy. I'm nothing. Uh, I'm not even the lowliest joke-telling uh, world. I think... Uh, I think I need to go back and re-watch that instructional video again. Yes, surely that will help me improve my... I don't like that. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. What? Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely down and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm what? going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself? You ruined bringing it. Me down, Stanley. Are you proud? Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you... Um, it's as though all of your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. Yes. Well, let me try that again, Stanley. I heard that you are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. No? Still not? It, is it the delivery? Pale with shame. Pale with shame? Pale... What's another word to describe a bucket? Stanley, this bucket is so metal, I think I saw it playing guitar. No, 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 no. We're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I'm just... I gotta I go to the bathroom. Jokes. Oh, no, it's ending. I need more instructional videos. That's exactly what I I wanted to have him talking while I poop. Make me the king of comedy again. More instructional videos. Let's see.